I am revved up and ready to go. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. And this is another Monday. It is May 8th. Now, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to focus in on some hot OTC and penny stocks, stocks that have potential to make us money. We are particularly looking at stocks under five bucks. That's what a penny stock is. And they're on every single market. So we'll be on every single market. Now, when I find interesting stocks, they're interesting because they got hot charts. They look like they're ready for a breakout or got strong continuation. Then I go looking for a catalyst, some news, a filing to get that chart on fire. And those are the type of stocks I'm sharing with you today. So the first stock we're taking a look at is ticker SMX. She is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is SMX, Public Limited Company. Now her chart is ready to break out again. She's on a double bounce. She bounced back on April 10th and she's bouncing now because she had news presses come out on both days and they were basically the same sort of news that I'm going to share with you here in just a second. So SMX, she finished the day at $1.82 with over 41% gains. And I can tell you right now, she's getting aftermarket activity because that's already jumped. So what does SMX do? Well, that's questionable, but we'll start here. Their business description here says that SMX is the next generation solution to address the anti-counterfeit brand protection, client liability, and track and trace markets in order to uphold supply chain integrity and provide quality assurance and brand accountability to producers of goods. That's great, but that's not exactly what it says over here. Jumping into a current news press, they say, as global businesses face new and complex challenges relating to carbon neutrality and meeting new government and regional regulations and standards, SMX is able to offer players along the value chain access to its marking, tracking, measuring, and digital platform technology to transition more successfully to a low carbon economy. <laughs> That's a long ways from brand protection, but we're going to get more information about this when we look at a current piece of news. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Nice jump. Huge jump. Wow. Going from 1.2 million to 35 million shares. People are paying attention to it. Share structure for the company. We got absolutely nothing here. So I had to do a Google search here. I'm not looking for the float. I'm just looking to see what's there. So I jumped over here to Google, put in their ticker, the name of the company. They tell us the shares outstanding is 12.9 million. We get a secondary back here, 12.9 million. And the float Ooh, a bonus. <laughs> I don't know if we can trust it, but it ain't much less than the outstanding share count. 12.2 million. Disclosures for the company. Oh, uh, we do have a 6K here, which just came out. 5.5. Five. That was last Friday. Join the company's in it. Oh, this has to do with the news. Yep. So let's just jump on over to that news. Diving into the news, which is where all the action comes from. We've got two pieces of news here that have really had the charts moving. One that came out today and one that came out April 10th. And really, they're the same sort of news. SMX forms International Legal Prosecuting Task Force to investigate possible irregular past trading patterns and possible illegal market manipulation of the company's shares. Yeah, that's exciting. Get rid of this illegal shorting and the stock has a chance of rising. This illegal shorting can force the price down every time it starts to rise. And people are excited about a fair game. The stock actually jumped 89% on that news. And it did fall back 20%, which means it retained 69% of the gains on that run at that time. That's how important it was to these people. Then we have some news, a change of operations, if you will. Right, We were looking at the description. They were talking about marking materials and fabrics for the blockchain traceability and credibility stuff. Now they're working with carbon neutrality. Well, what exactly is that? Well, we've got two pieces of news here. SMX, Intellect EU, and Plastics Apps collaborating to enable R&D to production to recycle full circular economy platform service. Now, this is the big part of it, and I didn't see the stock jump too much here, but it should. Frost and Sullivan project that the SMX shares are on their way to $6.50. 
They are looking at potential domination with their patented plastic recycle solution. And that's what it's all about, folks. The company has come up with a way of marking plastic. Now, we've already got marks on plastic. You know what can be recycled and stuff like that. But this is a lot more intricate than that. It's going to tell you how many times this plastic has been recycled, where it originated from, and a whole lot of other stuff. And they say it's going to be very practical and cost efficient, and it's going to help in the long run. They go on to tell us that with the capacity to track, trace, and certify and authenticate all gas, liquid, and solid products throughout the entire supply chain from raw material to the eventual product to the recyclables and reuse, SMX provides an all-encompassing solution that sets the stage for a circular economy. So they're not just working with fabrics anymore. They've gotten into the big game, going green. And that last piece of news is a lot like the one we read on April 10th. In this one, they tell us that SMX is pleased to announce that Sidon Law has joined SMX as their international legal prosecuting task force to investigate and analyze possible irregular trading patterns, spoofing, and possible illegal market manipulation of the company's shares. Furthermore, Sidon Law will work with Mr. Joshua Skule, he is a former FBI Executive Assistant Director, to formally liaise with regulators to ensure triggers are in place to notify SMX in real time of possible illegal trading activities. I've never heard of triggers being put in place before. They will also communicate with contacts at the regulatory agencies and law enforcement to prevent any continuation of illegal trading activities, and they will hold responsible both civilly and criminally those responsible through legal activities through the American and Irish legal systems filing a request for intervention through Interpol if necessary. They are getting serious now, folks. They're putting fear out there. We dare you to try to trade our stock illegally. Furthermore, they are going to require shareholders that own 3% or more of the company to actually prove what ownership they actually have. So they're getting down to hard tactics right now. And the shareholders love it. You don't want your stock forced down illegally. It's one thing to play the game fair and be losing. But to be losing not fair, urgh, that really gets on people's nerves. <laughs> so let's go take a look at that chart. And I'll show you how she's been bouncing on this news. No big surprise here. We are right back here at Think or Swim where I spend a lot of my time. This is the free trading platform you get just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. So this is a six month, four hour view for ticker SMX, but it doesn't cover six months. Our chart actually starts here March 8th. I don't know why, but that's where she's at. And she is at a high of $6.20. Now, we read in that news press that they see this stock going to 650, so they're expecting it to break its high. She then fell to a low at the beginning of April of 73 cents when that first news press came out about finding those illegal traders, and she ran from 73 cents up to $3.90. You're talking over 400% gains on that news. Then she came crashing through that 50-day SMA, and she is running back up again. These last two days have had a lot of volume, even more volume than we had back there. She started a run here at about 85 cents, hit a high of $2.40, almost 300% gains, before she fell back to $1.83. Our oscillators are kicking all of them, look, they're all pushing up and our RSI is in the overbought right now. So everything looks brilliant on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour view. Well, there's your run to your high. That took one, two, three, four days to get there. Don't be in a hurry if she's on her light SMA. See how she's climbing on that nine day SMA? Only bounced off of that 20, never coming down to the 50. She then broke her 200, and right now she's climbing again. Man, she just chugged right through that 200, and again, she's floating on her nine-day SMA. She's had a pullback, but she's not under the nine. She's on top of the nine, and you can't climb unless you're on the nine. Our oscillators, well, these little bars right here are showing up right here. All of our oscillators are pulling back right at this moment. Looking at that five-day, five-minute chart. She's looking nice. She was hugging to that 200-day SMA, not going far at all. Trying to push up, 
with more and more power and she's climbing now bouncing off of that 50 day SMA she crushed it here but she got caught by the 200 and she is bouncing again and I like this because she makes good runs she's not going from 73 cents to a dollar three no she's going from 73 cents to three dollars and ninety cents 85 cents to 240 those are the kind of runs we're looking for folks so she's got news she's got fear right she's going to quit these shorters these illegal shorters from coming around hopefully just that in itself is going to help this i like the way smx has been behaving on the charts do you our next stock comes from the otc this is the sticker ttlhf total helium now, of course, I noticed this stock by noticing her chart. She had a big rip first thing this morning, which definitely caught my attention. But what really got my interest was noticing that the last day of trade wasn't yesterday, that is Friday. No, it was March 17th. There have been no trades, no blank spots, nothing. It goes from March 17th to May 8th. And it's like, what's going on here? So I ran over here to try to find some information. Well, I found a lot of information from March 20th, three days after she quit trading, lots of good news came out and she just came on the market today. And that's really all I can find. And I think we need to watch this stock. So TTLHF, she finished today just a smidge over 40 cents and just a little bit over 5% gains. She is on the pink tier of the OTC and she's current and she's got those precious green ticks we're always talking about. If you're thinking about getting into a pink, especially on the OTC market for a long hold, get as much validated information as you can get. I mean, even the disclosures, the financials aren't looked at by a CPA. These green ticks, verified profile and transfer agent. There's a lot of important information being validated behind the scenes by an unbiased third party. So if you're thinking about a long hold on a pink, get as much validated information as you can. Look for these green ticks. But if you're just trading a short swing or a day trade, ah, don't you worry about those ticks at all. So what does Total Helium do? Well, they tell us that Total Helium is a helium exploration, production, and storage company focused on bringing a reliable domestic supply of helium to the U.S. market. The company's footprint includes the largest continuous conventional natural gas and helium field in North America. In addition to its helium production activities, Toto Helium is establishing an underground helium storage facility with its industrial grass partner to ensure that the United States has a stable supply of helium at all times into the foreseeable future. Good for them. <laughs> so what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, we can't talk about relative volume. They only do that based on the last 30 days and there's been no trading the last 30 days. So we have no average volume. What we got is today's volume, 146,000 shares. Not a ton, but she was climbing. Looking at the share structure. Now I'm not looking up the floats hardly anymore because I just can't get any concrete answers. I'm just really wasting my time. So we're really just looking at the outstanding share count. And theirs isn't too bad. You're looking at roughly 66 million shares. Now they do offer up for suggestion that back in July of last year, the uh, float was 19 million. Maybe it still is, who knows? But if it's not, the best I can say with the surety is it's not more than 65 million. Financials for Total Helium. We've got nothing annually, no money coming in. And they're bringing in a little bit over the last few quarters, but not much paying the bills and maybe paying themselves if they're lucky. What's their balance sheet look like? Looking at the annual, well, they got 5.3 million in the bank. We got to put three zeros behind any of these numbers that we're looking at. And they've got total assets of 12.1 million and liabilities only 2.3 million. So they may not be making a lot of money right now, but they're not in bad position financially. Disclosures for the company. Well, this is where I was hoping to find a SEC filing to explain why they weren't on the market. What was wrong? Well, there are no filings. So I'm not thinking anything was wrong. I'm thinking it was all administrative. Let me show you what I mean. It's in the news. Well, with regard to why she hasn't been on the market since March 17th, uh-uh. Nothing. Actually, this is all good news. There's nothing bad here. Our very first news press that came out this year was March 20th. 
Now, she quit trading on March 17th, so this news came out three days afterwards. Total Helium announces joint venture for large-scale helium production in Arizona. Now, this deal was actually made January 17th, 2023. The company entered into a definitive purchase and sale agreement for a joint venture in the Pinta South Helium Project in Arizona. They have partnered with Butler Minerals and Mid-America Exploration, both who are proven helium finders and producers. And the company believes that this joint venture is going to create significant shareholder value for years to come. Now, this is a pretty big project. They tell us here that the Pinta South project encompasses over 27,000 acres with over 150 potential drill sites. And then some information I don't totally understand. But the bottom line, the Pinta South project is attractive to Total Helium as it will allow the company to continue to sell produced helium at a higher volume and even at significantly higher prices than it has been doing previously. And then we see they closed the deal May 1st, but she's still not on the market. Then on May 5th, they go out and hire some companies to communicate to their investors. Thank you very much. I'd appreciate that because I can't find any information in filings or news for why they haven't been on the market in the U.S. I didn't realize that they hadn't been on the market in Canada either. And they just came back on the market today in Canada. Well, guess what? They just came back on the market in the U.S. as well. And I have no idea why. All I know is that nobody has had a chance to respond to all this good news, this new deal. And today, as soon as she came on the market, she took off. Let me show you. Looking at ticker TTLHF, Total Helium Limited. That is a six-month, four-hour chart. But that 200 there going to the very top tells me something happened back further. So I'm going to go back a year just to take a peek. Big fall. We had a high of 95 cents a year ago. She fell to a low of 23 cents at the very end of 2022. Coming down to that six-month, four-hour view, looking at that low bubble, she bounced off of that after a little while. She got up over top of that 50, over top of the 200, and it is taking time, but she is floating on her nine-day SMA. She's tested that 200 once, twice. There's a bear trap, and boom, she has taken off. But keep in mind, we have months between today and the last day traded. That is March 17th. So this is an entirely different market sentiment back here. And right now, all this volume coming in, it's probably responding to all that news nobody had a chance to respond to after March 17th. Our oscillators, not looking bad. Our PPO has an imminent crossover right now. PPO stands for Percentage Price Oscillator. It's a lot like your MACD. You read them the same, but the Percentage Price Oscillator works with a percentage of the price, or the MACD uses the whole price. Both are pushing up right now, about ready to cross significant lines. We got some green bars accumulating here, but our RSI is falling, as you would expect. She fell from 55 cents down to 40 cents. Looking at that 20-day one hour, oh, we're not going to see much here. No, not much at all. One day, that's what you get. You got your bounce to 55 cents, a drop to a low just above the nine at almost 40 cents. And right now we're at 40 cents. So she just basically went sideways the rest of the day. And that's what the oscillators look like. Psh, just going sideways. Five day, five minute, you get a little more view. There's your high. She came down to that low, bounced up back on top of the nine and she's hanging onto the nine and she's under it right now. That is the worst part we've seen. She is underneath the nine day SMA. But this is her first day of trading in many months with lots of news that people have to digest. I'll bet you a lot of people don't even know she's on the market yet. So me, I'd be putting TTLHF on my watch list and watch for that volume to come in. This could be a nice runner. Who knows? It's been a while since anybody's played with it. Really? We're going to look at natural shrimp again? You bet your soggy bottom we are. Have you seen the chart? It's in breakout mode again. And you know she's got catalysts. She's about ready to close that merger deal with the SPAC Yoda acquisition. So yeah, we're looking at shrimp again. Ticker SHMP finished the day at about six and a half cents with just a little over 10% gains. Now she's on the middle 
tier of the OTC. This is the better tier. It's better than the pink because you got to involve a CPA. You got to have your financials audited here, not on the pink. And Trimp has those two green ticks we're always looking for. So she looks solid. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with what Natural Shrimp does, Natural Shrimp is an Aquatech company. They're headquartered in Dallas, and they have a production facility located near San Antonio, Texas. Now, they're only listing one. I am almost positive they have two, maybe even three right now. The company's developed the first commercially viable system for growing shrimp in enclosed saltwater systems using a patented technology to produce fresh, never frozen, naturally grown shrimp without the use of antibiotics or toxic chemicals. So they don't even deliver the shrimp frozen. It's always fresh. And they're doing all this only here in the United States. It's for us. So what was the relative volume around this company today? It's getting bigger. She's normally doing just under 3 million shares a day. Today, she did just over 3.4 million. And I'm expecting that number to grow the closer we get to the closing of this merger. Share structure for natural shrimp. Ooh, a lot of shares. Outstanding share count here is 840 million. The unrestricted shares, that is to say shares on the market, which is the same thing as the float. So I normally think of that as the float. Well, that's three quarter billion. That's a big float. Now, I don't know that that's the float, but I wouldn't be holding my breath for a small float. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Financials for Natural Shrimp. All right, they just started making money last year, as you can see, 000, zero and then $33,000. Don't forget those three zeros. And then looking at the quarterly. Now, that is up to March of 2022. And that's where it picks up right here. March of 2022, 17,000. The next quarter, 36. 51, 97, so things are improving and getting better there. And there is a financial ready to come out, and I'm sure it's going to be bigger. And that could be a catalyst, no doubt. But we're looking at this for the closing of this merger. It's about ready to happen. Finally, over here at the disclosures, we've got something new to look at. We've got an 8K that came out at the beginning of May me loves me eight gays. These are material changes. You're going to hear about your reverse mergers, your acquisitions, uh, reverse splits, CEO being fired. I mean, big pieces of news come out in 8K. So I love to poke my head just to see what's going on. Jumping into this one, they give us all the filing information, but then down here at the bottom, they also add in the press release, which is just easier to read. Now, they tell us here this week's filing of the S4, the last piece to the puzzle, represents a key event to close our proposed business merger with Yoda in the second quarter of 2023. We're there right now, folks. We're about halfway through it. So, 45 days or less, they are expecting this merger between Shrimp and Yoda to close. More importantly, the registration statement includes amended financials for the nine months of 2021 and 2022 ended December 31st. A lot of people have been waiting for that. Now, looking at some of the benefits of what's going to happen as soon as this merger happens, uh, this is going to accelerate commercialization and production ramp up of the farm to table sushi grade shrimp and fresh seafood, including the planned U.S. facility expansion. They already have two or three facilities and they want two or three more. How are they going to pay for them? Well, that's the great thing about merging with a SPAC. The SPAC gives you money. Natural Shrimp could receive up to $105 million of net cash proceeds to work with. That's how they're going to build those extra facilities. They go on to tell us here, and this is quite interesting to me. I'm not sure I'm understanding this right, but I'll give you my point of view. Yoda Acquisition will issue 17.5 million of its common shares to the stockholders of Natural Shrimp. Well, I'm a stockholder. Are you? I don't think they're talking about the insiders. I think they're talking about us. So are we going to get extra portions put on our plate as soon as this merger is completed? That is to say, are we going to get some free shares? That's what it sounds like. They go on to say that in addition, the stockholders of Natural Shrimp are entitled to receive an additional 5 million common shares based on achieving certain revenue targets for 2024 and another 5 million for targets reached in 2025. They're not saying insiders. They're not saying management. Now, I've not seen this before. 
Do shareholders actually get free shares in this sort of thing? Sounds like it could be possible. Now, I don't see anything else over here to point out to you, except we've got a uh, clock ticking here, and there is no more new news. As I said, this S4 was the last piece of news they had, and it's the last piece of the puzzle. The clock is ticking, and the chart is set up for a breakout as if it knows what's to come. Looks like our shrimp is coming up off the bottom of the ocean floor. This is ticker SHMP. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Our high bubble, it was back in October of about 20 cents. She came down, bounced off of this very strong support. You can see she hit it here, bounced up, hit it there, and then crushed it here and fell down to a low at the end of April of about three and a half cents. And right now, things are changing. Now, I really don't think the low bubble is the catalyst here. It is all about this merger deal closing. The volume is starting to come in because people are getting excited. She rode on over that 50 with a lot of exuberance. Look at these bars, boy. Really tiny, getting bigger. Once on top of the 50, they got gigantic. Shot through that 200, shot through that strong support. Fell back, but look where it fell, right on top of the nine. That's where you want to fall. If you're going to come down, you want to stop on that nine-day SMA. And she did. And she is back to climbing right up underneath the 200 right now at 64.5 cents with our 200 at 66 cents. And the support is up here at 71. If we can break that 200, get on top of that support, I think we'll get a very strong run out of this. Our oscillators are in agreement. Look at that PPO and that MACD. Both are pushing up very strong. Our RSI has had a little bit of pullback, but she is at 61. 20-day, one-hour view. Rolling down to that low bubble really didn't do anything, did she? For one, two, three days. On the fourth day, she came alive. The volume started coming in. She started rising. Came back down to her 50. Did not come back down to the 200. That shows you she really doesn't want to come down. She wants to stay up or climb and she's bounced off that 50 and she is climbing on her nine day SMA. Oscillators are looking pretty good. Yeah, we had a wee bit of pullback there that's showing up, but everything looks strong. Everything is pushing up. Matter of fact, even with this pullback here, my RSI is actually starting to turn back up. And look at our 200. I don't want to overlook that. It was totally flat right in this area, but it is actually turning back up now. Everything is looking nice. Five day, five minute. Bouncing off of that low up to the high. Came down to that 200 sideways. Through the 200 again, and she's starting to look strong. She got a little dizzy in this area. The volume is tapering off right now, but keep in mind, we're on a countdown. 45 days or less for, for this closing to happen. And when it happens, lots of things are going to change. And there could be a heck of a lot of excitement, especially the way she's sitting on the four-hour chart next to that 200 and that strong support. I like shrimp. I hold shrimp. Disclaimer. <laughs> Ticker SHMP. If you're not in it yet, you may want to consider it now. Let's round off our research by looking at a penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange. This is Senzionics, ticker S-E-N-S. -E they are coming out with financials tomorrow afternoon. So that gives us one day to watch this company. Now, I didn't find this stock because of the news. No, I found it because of the charts. And she is primo. She is that atypical breakout chart we're always looking for. With that down drooping 200 day SMA leveling off with the price right up underneath it looking for a good excuse to run. And that financial tomorrow is exactly that. I've gone through her news, her filings, her financials, and it looks good to me. Let me share with you what I found. Ticker SENS, she did finish the day at 66 and a half cents roughly with just over 9% gains. Now, what does this company do? Well, they tell us they are a medical technology company focused on the design, development, and commercialization of glucose monitoring systems to help people with diabetes. They used to have a basic CGM system, but they've come out with a better one called Eversense, and we'll get more information about this when we look at the news. So what was the relative volume around the company today? She had an increase, jumping from 3.8 million to 4.6 million. Maybe in anticipation of tomorrow's financials. 
Share structure. We've got 480 million, and I'm not going to trust that float of 18 million from 2015. Don't know what the float is, but it's probably high. Financials for SENS. So this is where the excitement builds up. Looking at the financials. We got that financial coming out tomorrow. What makes us think it's going to be bigger? Looking at the past financials. Every year they're getting bigger. Every quarter they're getting bigger. Now 2019 was a big year for them. They did over $21 million. But look at their gross profit there. $19.5 million lost. So it really wasn't a great year. From 21 million into the COVID year, they fell down to 5 million, jumped to over 13 million, and at the end of 2022, we're back up to 16 and a half million. Now, every year they were losing money, except last year. Last year, they're finally in profit, $2.7 million. Quarterly, same thing, steady growth, two, three, four, five million. This is why we're believing tomorrow's financial is gonna be bigger. Looking at her SEC filing, she has nothing recent here. She's got some back in April, but none that are going to affect the chart tomorrow. Looking at that news. So this is where their last financial came out, which we were looking at for $16 million, where they're finally making a profit. And they told us at the end of April that they were releasing their earnings report and have a conference call tomorrow. If you want to be a part of that conference call, it's at 4.30 in the afternoon. But between the two financials, things have been happening directly and indirectly for the company. Indirectly, Abbott recalls millions of freestyle Libra glucose monitoring devices. Millions got recalled. That's horrible. But now you got millions of people who need devices. This company may have got some long-term customers out of that situation. Then in the middle of April, the company announced their first pediatric study participant insertions in the enhanced clinical trials. So they're trying to help babies as well. And then at the end of April, they give us an update of the deal that they made a year ago. And this is where all the money's coming from. They made a deal with Essentia Diabetes Care. It was in April 2022, Ascensa launched their Evisense system for patients in the U.S. shortly after it was approved by the FDA. The system was devised by Sensonics and includes the longest lasting CGM sensor available with up to six months of wear compared to just one or two weeks with most other systems. What a huge difference. Alongside improved longevity, this next generation system also offers people with diabetes unique and competitive features such as fully implantable sensor, a removable smart transmitter, discrete on-body vibe alerts, oh my god, and exceptional accuracy one and intuitive smartphone app. This has got a lot going on for the diabetic community. And I'm just going to cover two of the highlights here. You can read the rest on your own time. They have significant coverage success with over 250 million covered lives. Plus, it is favorable with Medicare reimbursement and coverage from nearly all major national insurers. Plus, Enhance has a pivotal clinical trial for a 365-day sensor underway with plans to submit data to the FDA for potential approval targeted mid-2024. So their uh, six-month thing is going to be pushed to a year. Wow, implantable devices with long batteries. Thank God for that. So they've got a lot going on right now. We see their financials are growing. The market's getting bigger. Why shouldn't there be a jump tomorrow, especially when the chart is set up? That is an atypical breakout chart. This is ticker SENS, six month, four hour view. Six months ago, we had a high of $2.06, but we had a tremendous fall all this time. She did take a break right here and laid on the 200 for a while and then slipped and fell to a low of 54 cents about eight or 10 days ago. Been banging her head on the 50 here, and two days ago, she got over that 50, and she is right up underneath that 200. Volume has been growing for the last three days in preparation for a launch tomorrow. 
Oscillators are looking good. We've had our crossover on our PPO two days ago. She's pushing up. Cross the signal line with the MACD. Look, everything's on fire. Everything is pushing up. You can't go wrong if every oscillator is pushing to the moon. 20-day, one-hour view. So she was under the 200, hit a high, fell down to a low. She's been wrestling with that 200, and like I said, the last two days, she's gotten strong. She got on top of the 200, tested it a couple of times, and jumped. Got on top of her nine-day SMA and is not looking back. Got even aftermarket activity still pushing up, and all of our oscillators cannot look any better. Everything is red or pushing up right now. Looking good. At five-day, five-minute. So she came off of that low bubble here of 55 cents four days ago, arguing with the 200, but once she got over the 200, she won that argument, pushed off, and now she is working with her 50. You can see she bounced on it here, bounced on it here, and she is just staying above it. You can see we are on an uphill climb right now. Our oscillators, though, look like they're in divergence, don't they? Divergence means that the oscillators are doing the opposite of what they should be. Those that normally follow the price, like your uh, RSI and your PPO, when it goes up, these go up too. Well, that's climbing, but that's actually coming down. Interesting. Things have cooled off here, but I like that chart. She is sitting on the 50, pushing up, and all of the other SMAs are pushing up right up underneath her. I think SENS has got a chance tomorrow. Come on. It's only one day you got to keep it on your watch list. S-E-N-S. -E it may be worth it. Well, there you go, folks. Four stocks to consider. We've got merger deals. We got financials. We got hot charts. What we need is your cooperation. Do some more due diligence, folks. Don't just count on what I share with you. I give you what I think is important. May not be what you think is important. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.